Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding sticky wax and dead skin. And in this particular ear, this is their right ear, the wax had been pushed further in using a cotton bud. You may have seen the indentation. Um, just commencing with this, their left ear first and um, performing microsuction. So I'm using a standard zone of suction probes. So there's many different types of suction probes available. Um, and the zone of suction probe is the most suitable for oral microsuction. Um, so the diameter um, of the zone of suction probe is the outer diameter, should I say, is 2.1 um, millimeters, and the internal diameter is about 1.7. Um, you can get larger suction probes like the McGill suction probe, which is three millimeters um, outer diameter. However, that's just too large for the ear. Um, it has too much suction power and it's also too noisy. Um, so they are typically used for uh, more nasal or throat procedures, but I am aware that they are also sometimes used for ear wax removal. So if they are to be used, they should only be used laterally so near the entrance so the ear is less exposed to the noise it generates and obviously you want to keep it further away from the eardrum because the additional suction power may cause trauma to the eardrum and the middle ear structure so the ossicles that are attached to the eardrum sorry i've got a bit of hay fever so uh, i've got some runny eyes and uh, some nasal congestion so um, pardon me and i do apologize now what I've done is I've removed the outer half of this wax plug out but this inner half is quite sticky um, and I've installed some olive oil drops just to change the consistency but when you've got this type of wax um, it can be quite tricky to remove because it sticks to the inside of the suction probe and it also sticks to the canal wall um, because of it, of it, it's almost like glue so the olive oil helps to bind the wax together remove some of the adhesions and it lines the inside of the suction probe, so it reduces the likelihood of the suction probe getting blocked. Uh, whenever you introduce oil into the ear, it can sometimes obscure your view. Um, so the outer third of the ear canal, you can see it in this patient, they've got a few hair strands there, and those hair strands can be coated by the oil. So whenever you put the suction, the, the endoscope in, it can smear against the lens. And also when you perform the suction itself as it's vacuuming the oil can also blur the, the lens of the camera but uh, with experience it's fine i used to put the drops in and then drain the drops um, wipe the inside of the ear and then go back in but more and more now i'm actually performing the procedure whilst the oil's in situ i just find it's better results um, and it's more efficient for the patient because you don't have to keep them in that position for a long time with the hell tilted over to one side and drained the other side so it just works much better you can see the eardrum in the distance there's some wax as you can see it's up against the eardrum now this patient returned from holiday recently and they went in the pool and that made the water got into the ear and it got blocked it got trapped and the wax that they already had absorbed the water and it swelled and it expanded and it created more of a blockage the patient then used a cotton bud, um, uh, almost like an act of desperation because they were so they weren't able to hear, and it just pushed this wax plug further in. Unfortunately, then they used some softening drops, and they said the softening drops made the impaction worse. And that can often be the case once you've got a substantial amount of earwax in your in your ear. Using softening drops, whether it's olive oil, so oil based ones, or water based ones like hydrogen peroxide or sodium bicarbonate drops, it can exacerbate the uh, your symptoms because the wax block can get large and i'll explain how why how and why that occurs in a moment so just gonna go back into the ear just some residual wax skin around the edge it was impacted it was sticky so i don't think this really comes away but i'm just hovering over because we're on the bony part of the ear we've got to be careful we don't want to cause any trauma because the bony part is very sensitive part of the ear and i don't want to screen it looks big but it's some sort of natural wax we all have a bit of wax and i've got a bit of wax in my ear and it's just coating the surface so it's nothing to be concerned by and if it's coming away brilliant if not i'm not too concerned so there is going to be some left over 
So uh, if you use water-based drops, um, sixty percent there or thereabouts of earwax is made up of dead skin cells, exfoliated dead skin cells that once lined the the canal wall and the eardrum wall. And these skin cells are hydrophilic; they absorb mo- uh, water and moisture. And by doing so, the skin cells expand; they swell. Um, and as they swell, of course, the wax plug itself is going to also expand and swell, so it can exacerbate. Um, your symptoms, it can enlarge the wax plug. And so 60, as I mentioned, 60% of a wax plug is made up of dead skin cells. The remaining 40% are um, a, a lipid oil called sebum and an oily sweat, the same sweat we have under our armpits. And so this wet matter, these oily sweats and um, fatty secretions, they coat the, the, the dead skin cells. So the dead skin cells form a matrix um, it's like a spider's web, some mesh work, and it then gets filled in by these oils, and that's that's how uh, a wax plug is formed. So when you put oil-based drops in, um, yes, they do soften the wax plug, but the oil itself can also um, add a veneer, if you like, another coating around the wax plug. So oil also can um, cause a, a wax plug to expand. So they do it in different ways. <laughs> So they used drops and it made their symptoms worse. As soon as they got back from the holiday, they contacted us immediately and we managed to get them in the same day, actually, they, on the, upon their return. So you see the eardrum, it's visible. Again, there's some wet stuff around the edge. I'm just going to see if I can get this out. I'm not overly concerned. If I can't, the patient can hear significantly better. Now, there was a bit at the end where the patient began to experience the caloric effect, so they got a bit dizzy. So I came out of the ear and we left it as that. What's the caloric effect? So the caloric effect is when you can experience vertigo uh, and nausea and even sickness due to um, temperature or pressure change in your ear. So each ear has an organ of balance. And so the organ of balance in the ear is called the vestibular system. And it consists of three semicircular canals. And they um, can either be excited by increased temperature or pressure, or they can be inhibited by reduced temperature and uh, pressure. Now, when you're sat still, um, looking straight ahead, so you're in a stationary position, your brain receives equal messages from both vestibular organs, so from each ear, and that tells your brain that you're, you're, you're still, you're remaining still. Now, when we perform microsuction, it actually reduces the ear temperature. So in this right ear, because we're performing microsuction in this ear, the ear temperature reduces in this ear, so it inhibits the function of the organ of balance in this right ear. So the brain is now receiving less messages from the right ear in comparison to the left ear, and that tricks your brain into believing you're moving to your left side, where it's receiving more messages. And so subsequently, your your brain is um, tricked into thinking you're moving to the left side, um, but then your eyes are trying to correct your brain um, and telling your brain that actually, no, you're not. Um, you're not moving to the left, we're in a stationary. So your brain's getting conflicting messages and that can then induce vertigo. So the feeling of the room spinning around and you spinning of the room. And that sensation can also make you feel nauseous or actually physically sick. And it can last about a minute. And so it's probably sometimes spits a bit longer. Um, so whenever you get a caloric effect, you want to come out of the ear. Uh, I've had a patient feel sick before as well, so you've got to be careful. Um, but it's a short term, it's not long term dizziness, it's just short term, once they recover they're fine to drive home, it's not a problem. Um, so what you're waiting for is almost the temperature to to rise again in that ear, you're performing microsuction in, so let the temperature go back to normal, so your brain starts to receive equal messages again from both ears, and the, the vertigo should resolve. And during the procedure, I try and encourage my patients to keep their eyes open so and fix on a point. So that helps the eyes correct the brain and telling the brain that you, you are stationary. Sometimes it's a tendency of closing your eyes, and so I find that just gets people a bit more dizzy, but it is difficult to keep the eyes open, of course. So you can see there's a bit left at the front, but we're not too concerned by that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, speak soon.